Okay, so if you're part of the Jeep community, you probably already know about the faulty locker sensors in the 2018 or newer JL Wrangler Rubicons or the 2020 and newer JT Gladiators. Now, many people have been dealing with this issue for a while, but we're here to tell you about the easiest, the simplest fix. And we're going to jump over to Scott, who's going to walk us through and tell us some more details on how to combat this issue. One of the things that has been problematic, it's called the uh, lock position sensor. It basically tells the computer where the locker position is, whether they're locked or unlocked. And the computer's got to know this, and if it doesn't have that information, it'll throw a fault. And that's fine because it tells you what's going on. It puts a little thing on your dash that says service or the locker system or drive accident. This is important stuff if you're out on the trail or even if you're driving and you don't want this light on your dash. The reason why they go bad actually is it's actually a problem with the design, which they haven't changed by the way. So the design actually is a, a locker position sensor. It's a Hall Effect device and it sits in the actually pumpkin of your uh, axle and what it does is it tells the computer where that axle position is and what happens is that oil that is surrounding it, it's actually in the oil itself. Oil is fine because it's a basically an insulator so you don't have any problem. The problem occurs is when you have the wear on the gears or if you change the gears to bigger gears, let's say or a different gear ratio, then in that situation you would have a metal filings from the wear uh, that, that it, or metal particles, let's put it this way, not a lot of, it's not that big, it just takes the small particles in the oil itself and it becomes a conductor. What happens is that conductor conducts. you end up with a short or a misreading from that position sensor because now the electrical values are going to change because you're changing the resistance value of that. So that's where your errors come in and your fault come in. The computer says, hey, I can't turn those lockers on. And if you need them, the lockers still work. It's just that the computer can't turn them on because it doesn't know where they are. This is the Z-Locker OEM. The OEM actually means original equipment manufacturer and these connectors are made to actually fit in that connector without any modification. They will fit that connector and they'll go in between your harness and that connector where it actually connects to the actual sensor plug itself that sticks outside the pumpkin of your differential, which is your axle. So easy to put together and if you're on the trails, no tools required. Just pop the other one out, put this one in its place and plug the other one into it. Now you have lockers and you don't have that light and you have no more fault on your screen. This device tells the computer everything is fine and it says whatever the position you need is, it is. And so at that point, your lockers will be available to you to use. So it's a great thing to have and it fits in your glove. So if you ever heard of a spare tire fitting in your glove compartment, this is the closest thing you can get if you're off road. Let's say I'm not an off-roader, okay, but I want the lockers and I want the lights on. Why don't I just get it fixed? The trouble is when there's a, a problem with the supply itself of that product to get it fixed. What used to happen is when that went bad, uh, the dealership didn't actually have this part. It wasn't available, so they would replace the whole axle. They become unavailable because they're on back order because so many of them had gone bad. Things are starting to free up now, which is good but you still have a back order, those axles and the sensors, which is now available too, but it takes a lot longer to get. And the funny part is, even though you can get them, they haven't changed the design, so they can still go bad at any time. This is a great fix. Those are some of the errors that you would see. When it starts to happen, you'll notice you'll get your four wheel locker, suddenly will start to flash, and the thing is, you won't even be using the lockers. That's a good indicator that one of your sensors might be going bad. Now remember, there's two for the front and there's one for the back. And if you see these things start to happen, you might want to get your codes read. If you have a code reader, great. Or if you have the Taser, even better, the Taser JL Mini, you can actually read the codes and reset them. Not only that, but it'll allow you to you know, see which one is going bad. Could is it the front or is it the back? It'll tell you. Uh, so that's a good thing to know. Now keep in mind, if you just see the flashing four-wheel locker with the exclamation point, which is shown in the top right corner, that doesn't always present a code because it's actually not quite there yet. Uh, once it goes steady, that's when you can read the code. Okay, so once you have the codes, 
then at that point, what you can do is at the end of this video, we're going to have some codes listed that you can look for and see, hey, is it the position sensor or something else? And if it's related to the position sensor, whether it's front or back, this product can fix. We're going to uh, actually use the Taser JL Mini to read the codes and we could actually clear them too. First thing we're going to do is just get to our audio menu. There it is. And now we're going to go into the menu. There's the light show. Read DTCs. That's what we want. Going in there, using the plus to go to the different modules. And now there's where our codes are. This right here and this one, these are two codes that basically have to do with our position sensor. So it's, it's coming in the position sensor is out of range. So that's what we're getting this. Um, that's what we're going to fix by putting that bypass in. The next thing we could actually do if we wanted to is we could actually clear those codes. So we'll go to readiness. Good. And there we go. Clear DTCs. And there we go. So we just cleared them. All right. And now we're actually going to do the... Uh, connect that Z locker and we're going to make this problem go away. Uh, electronic differential that has the electronic lockers in it and this this piece in here that sits inside this pumpkin is where your sensor is. This is the sensor that goes inside so this is the part that actually goes bad inside here. So here's your harness and there's a lock here you're going to remove that just push it back and then pull this out and now you're ready for your Z lockers. So here's your Z locker this is what you get in the box and basically this part is going to go onto the harness and that's going to go into the socket in here like so make sure you get it right basically it's going to snap and you're going to have this lock that's going to push in that's going to lock that in now the other part of that is going to go in here like so and you're going to push that in and now this is actually set this is actually ready to go but we're going to take one step further we're just going to take a zip tie this is another thing that fits in your glove compartment. Take a zip tie and we're just going to tie it onto the harness itself to hold it in place. And right there. And she's good to go. And you can cut that to make it a little neater. And that's also going to protect this wiring a little bit too to keep it from getting broken on you. So this is the front axle. And if you notice, um, the axle sensor is pointing to the back of the vehicle. The tires right here, there's the sensor, there's our harness. This is the sensor plug we want to take off. So we're going to pull that lock clip forward and we're going to pull it out just like that. And that came out pretty easy. We've kind of done this before, but at the same time, sometimes you have to give it a little bit of uh, elbow grease. So what we're going to do now is we're going to connect the Z locker to that. You hear that click? That's good. And now we're going to take this one, I'm going to plug that, right? And we're going to remember where your lock was it was facing the other way so i'm going to put that right in place like so there it goes that was the snap we'll push that forward that'll lock it and we'll zip tie that z locker to the harness itself to keep it from jumping around too much when you're off-roading put that in place like so it's ready to go and now your center is going to be bypassed by this device the z locker oem and those lockers are going to work when you need them that was a really quick fix. Under five minutes, you got your, your, uh, your functionality of your axles, lockers back. Kind of an easy way to make those work again. If you're on the trails, this is a, a no-brainer. You should have an extra one of these in the glove compartment because the front or the back can go. They have the same sensor. So, and they are the same problematic issue. If you're getting the light, just remember, if you put it on the front and you're not sure about codes and things of that nature, you just, problematically troubleshoot it, then that's fine. Just remember if it doesn't work on the front, put it on the back and, and that should do the job. So if you're seeing the symptoms, it's a good chance that's what's going on. Many people have their Jeeps and they have the, the Rubicon Jeeps and the Gladiators and they, they change the axles. And that's great because that gives you tons of performance, which is fantastic. But what happens when you do that is you lose that functionality of those switches on your dash to control those lockers. So the nice thing is, with Z Automotive, we have this Z Locker controller, which fits your uh, aftermarket uh, axle locker sensor, and then this goes to the harness, and now you have full functionality of those lockers, just as if you had the original equipment. So this is the controller, and this goes to an aftermarket axle. And if you do a lift, we have an extension as well. So the extensions, you can actually go up to seven and a half feet 
uh, if you needed to. And you can actually uh, still connect these and have full functionality of those lockers when you need it most. This is, if you change your axle, you want to use those switches, that's your answer. Thank you. Wow, Scott, thanks so much for that great video. Scott's not over there. He left a while ago. But speaking of video, thanks so much for watching and please like our video and subscribe to our channel. Helps so much, we're trying to put out great valuable content with our products and we hope that you stay tuned and watch the next one that pops up over here. I think it's probably, watch this.